Hello, Rana. It is lovely. It is lovely to meet you, uh, even if it is in this uh, in this virtual uh, context which we are meeting. Uh, yes, it's great to meet you too. It, it's um, I, I I I did have the opportunity uh, to be in Jordan and to be in a man and uh, uh, a few years ago. Uh, my 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 wife, who is into uh, marathon running, uh, did the oh. a man to Dead Sea marathon. Uh, which uh, is quite a is quite a run, and is, yeah. uh, we were there. So that's a that's a few years back. But I'm looking forward to obviously having the chance to talk to you today and to hear um, from yourself and your experience. You really your to hear your firsthand knowledge of uh, working, particularly obviously with the Syrian refugees and the young children mm -hmm. in general uh, in Jordan. I think it'll it'll be um, it, it should be a very interesting conversation. Yes. So you obviously work closely with Irish Aid, right? Yes, I, I'm so, responsible for, for Irish Aid. I'm the minister with responsibility for it. So could you tell us what more about it and what you want people to know? Well, I, I suppose one of the key things for us in Irish Aid that ties in very much to what I think we'll be talking about today is we have a very strong approach uh, in terms of the type of aid we want to deliver and particularly in the area of education and particularly in uh, the area of promoting and developing gender equality. And a lot of that is part of a very long standing um, part of our development aid um, program that we have. And we believe it's a really crucial part of it. Um, you know, if you look at what we as a country are doing and what we would be um, focusing on, we, we believe that yes, education, and we think that's, that, that, that's hugely important, but we also particularly want to focus on women's education and girls' education, because we believe that drives the gender equality side of things. And really important for us is that there's not only huge benefits in terms of changing the lives of young women and young girls in terms of providing that education, but we also are very interested in promoting the greater aspect of how you can use education to be transformative for a country, for a society, to promote economic development, to promote growth, to promote a, a better standard of living for everybody by promoting through education. And one of the key knowledges that we have in relation to that is we take our own experience as a small country because we are now a very prosperous, wealthy Western European country in many, many ways. And uh, there's a lot of people here in Ireland who point to problems and issues, but in general, in the context of, of countries. But we did a lot of that without having the benefit of huge natural resources of our own, without having heavy industry, without having whatever. And at the heart of what we were doing in transforming Ireland was education, was working on education, was getting education for our young people and using education as a builder for a better world. Um, and we have taken that very much into our international development policy and very much believe that it's a huge contributor. But at the heart of that must also be uh, promoting that equality opportunity, that societal change that promotes uh, uh, gender equality. But yeah. I, also, I also want to know, um, why are you focusing on education overseas as well, and specifically for girls? Because if what we have looked at is, particularly in conjunction with the Global Partnership mm -hmm. for Education, we're committing about 60 million on, uh, to that, and we're then ring-fencing uh, about 10 million of that as well. And, and, and we believe that what we're doing and what we're doing is twofold. Um, we are, as we talked about, promoting that whole aspect of gender equality. But we're also very, very conscious of the fact um, that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a huge impact on education. It mm -hmm. has, there has been huge damage to education globally. Um, there have been huge setbacks. And we need now... The, the world to come together on this and to put increased resources and increased effort into putting a real change into how we deliver education and in making sure that we stop the erosion that's taking place because of COVID. Uh, because in actual fact, um, you know, it's very difficult to quantify immediately because we're right in the middle of a pandemic, 
but we've probably seen years of progress set back or damaged very substantially uh, because of what has happened over COVID. And that's not just in terms of the financial aspect, but also in terms of a societal attitude. So there is a tendency with any country uh, or any society when there is a shock that to go back to the historic ways of doing things. And one of the historic ways of doing things, unfortunately, particularly for young girls, was to pull girls out of education, maybe leave the boys in education, but to pull the young girls out of education and, and to, to deal with trying to deal with the, uh, the impact of the pandemic in that way. And we believe that we must now double down on this and say, no, that's not the way we want to go. We want to see real different way of thinking on this. We want to see more effort going into it. And we want to make sure that we don't lose the progress we've made in recent years. Yeah, education, I think probably is the thing other than um, economically that took the biggest hit. Oh, I, I, yes, I would, I, I, I would agree with you. I'd be really interested to hear maybe what, what your experience on the ground has been mm -hmm. over the last 18 months, or maybe how you saw the impact on education and in particularly maybe how you saw the impact on girls' education or particularly impact on vulnerable groups, the uh, refugee children and uh, mm -hmm. et cetera. So I, I, I'd be interested in getting your perspective on that. So I think um, all students here, they were, they were all affected because I mean, you had to learn basically how to learn all over again because it wasn't face-to-face, -face, it was more online. And that was a bit of a struggle. But I think specifically it was refugees and people from difficult circumstances that were affected the most because, um, well, you relied a lot on internet, you relied a lot on, on technology and on electricity. And sometimes you'd have power outages, sometimes you wouldn't have enough Wi-Fi or strong enough Wi-Fi to get to to your school, to get to your classes, and and specifically for people who only had access to one device, you saw that a lot for, let's say, if a girl had maybe an older brother or a younger brother, and then her parents would be more willing to give the device to her brother over her because they felt that his education was more important than her education. And when I spoke to girls at the camp, they all said the same thing, that this was one of the issues that they faced and something else when, when they were home for longer periods of time their parents were more inclined to use them for housework rather than to make them sit around and focus on their education so that was also a, yeah there were a lot of issues but that those were specifically the ones that came up from everyone that I spoke to yeah no I I, I, I think it is interesting that first-hand perspective on it mm. because I think it ties in with what I have heard from other people right around in conversations like this that um, it, it, it is, you know, everything in life starts off being an element of unfair. And then unfortunately, a pandemic increases the unfairness. So when you see the impact of the pandemic, those in the most marginal position, those who are yes. the poorest of the poor first, are going to be impacted disproportionately hard as a result of the pandemic hitting and you are and I mean you you there in your comments to me have actually crystallized what I was trying to say earlier on which is it is then the impact not just the immediate impact the health immediate impact but it's that societal mindset that says like well the historic way we would have done this is to make sure that the boy gets educated mm. and if that means that if we've only one device to connect to the internet and we've only one hour worth of broadband time or whatever we will give it there so i think the the what comes back to us out of that is that we must work to uh, to broaden and deepen the understanding of the importance of education for young girls and to to in, get that, that message embedded uh, so as that there's a realization that it is for everybody not not just for the particular young girl or young boy that education is needed but that for the good of all, the importance of having everybody having that equal access to education. Um, and the other thing then I think that's very important is to, to put in place programs that reflect the problems of that life, that reflect the problems of remote learning or having internet access um, that reflect um, and, and facilitate people being able to learn in that way. So I think that's really the type of work that we want to see. And I know the GPE are, are, are heavily supportive of as well. 
uh, in, in terms of that. So, um, I, I mean, in, in terms of, I, I think the, one of the things we've worked on, the, the, the education can't wait, which is that recognition, particularly for children in refugee camps that, you know, there's such a short window in life where the opportunity to have that education and the difference it can make to them for the rest of their entire lives. And there's also a message in terms of the importance of that for, for everybody, because if, if you are dealing with empowering people and the next generation of people to be able to live, work and have a life outside of being a refugee, then it is really important that that resource goes in and we recognize uh, the importance um, of that. In, in terms of a general, I mean, what, what was the impact on young people's lives within Jordan of the, the pandemic over the last 18 months? I think specifically maybe socially, because they all stopped socializing a lot. So you, you saw some kids were more fearful of meeting new people. They were very shy when usually before they were a lot more active. So that was, that was one thing that I saw a lot, especially with the kids at the camp. Yeah, it, it, it is, I think, something that we probably will need a little bit of time mm -hmm. to evaluate. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it's very difficult, I think, to, to realise the impact on a generation of children that yes. will have seen the, the social norms of just the simple thing of, of how they watch mm -hmm. how their parents would greet somebody and to see that pulled away and to be told you can't. So I think there will be a lot of impact on that, and, and which has unfortunately a direct impact on education then um, uh, coming out of it. So um, I, I, I think that's the, that's the, the type of uh, area that we'll need to be doing a lot of work in. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased to hear the, the, the fact that you are having the opportunity though to continue to that work and to continue to, to work away because it is so vital what you're doing. And I really do thank you and everybody who works with you on all your uh, on, on all your, uh, your 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 work uh, in the area uh, it is I, th I think really at the forefront of, of what we need to be doing now as we start to uh, hopefully emerge out of COVID-19 and um, so uh, a big thank you to for, for that I don't know if you have any concluding question for me or anything today if, if, uh, yes um, you for the next five years you have a plan ahead of you that you want to change and you want to improve education so what are your hopes for the future? Well, it, I, I think what, what we're going to be looking at over the next five years is very much what I've been talking about with mm -hmm. you this morning, which is um, that rebalancing uh, in terms of gender equality. So that particularly strong emphasis uh, in, in terms of providing resources and ring fenced resources uh, into young girls education in terms of that. Uh, I think the next key thing will be the, uh, the developing of a program to deal with the impact of COVID and specifically to, to take out of the, the next coming years uh, what we need to do to address both the damage done by COVID and what we, how we need to change the way in which we deliver the education systems to take account of COVID. Um, and I think finally what we need to do is to, to work, because I think it's, it's, it's a hugely important thing, to work not just in the area of the gender equality, but also to recognise and start to broaden out and look at areas, people like uh, disabilities, look about having a more inclusive and much broader region and, and, and saying, right, you know, if we're doing this and we're doing this for all and we want to be doing it on an inclusive and an equality basis, we need to be looking beyond just our traditional areas and saying, right, well, how are we looking at uh, young people with disabilities and how are we helping and supporting them, which I think is an area that we haven't been as focused on uh, in, in previous times. So they're the type of key areas that I want to see us taking forward over the next five years. Yeah. It's very important. Yes, thank you so much for your time and thank you for sitting with me and speaking to me about this. Is a, I think it's probably the most important topic right now. Yes, well, especially here. 
Well, can I say I, 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 it, it is um, a, a great privilege for me to have an opportunity to talk to your good self and to hear what you're doing directly on the ground and the work you're doing, because I would agree with you. I think it's a hugely important area at this moment in time for us. And I think it is really important that people like yourself, your generation are out there and you're carrying on the work that you're doing. Um, it hopefully will have the huge impact we wanted to have uh, in, in, in the years ahead. So thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. I think also we have to thank the people doing the work at the camp. They're the unsung heroes in so many ways of what actually happens. Um, and, you know, very often, uh, you, you know, you, you just don't ever get to hear the stories of, of the way people have given so generously of their own time and their own lives uh, to ensure that others, particularly young children, have that opportunity to have a life uh, in, in the years ahead. And, you know, that's an incredible thing for all people involved in education, but particularly people who, who choose to make that involvement in some of the most difficult circumstances around the world. Uh, so yeah, I would absolutely join with you in acknowledging that. So, so listen, Ramit, thank you very much uh, for your time uh, today. And, uh, Thank you uh, to, to Plan Ireland and to everybody else for, uh, for organizing our, uh, our conversation. Um, and as I say, I hope, I hope when we do reopen up that I'll get an opportunity to see firsthand some of the wonderful work that is actually being done on the ground. And I look forward to that. Yes, we look forward to it too. Thank you so much.